That's very kind of you. Uh, good evening. You are all very welcome. We've got a great show for you tonight, but hey, that's not why we're excited. No, no. Election campaigning officially started this week. Oh, the Labour launch went well. Lib Dem started off brightly. How did it go for the Tories? <laughs> The Lib Dems are exciting. The Lib Dems unveiled their election battle bus. Oh, goodness. Joe Swinson there. Now, it's very bright and positive, but on the other hand, a little bit showy-offy. You can't win, hey, can you, Joe? No, seriously, you can't win, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good, though, doesn't it? Big, shiny, going places, just like their party. Here's the Labour one. <laughs> um... <laughs> now, stop it. A lot of people, a lot of people are saying Jeremy Corbyn is, is too old and, and frail to be Prime Minister. I mean, it's so unfair. They'll be saying he's deaf next. <laughs> I said, they'll say you're deaf next! <laughs> yeah. In a campaign speech, Jezza warned about the dangers of doing a trade deal with the US and lowering food standards, didn't he? Yeah, you heard it, yeah. He said that in America, they allow things like rat hair in paprika. I mean, can you imagine? Rat hair in paprika. Hey, they do more than allow us. Yeah, they made it president. <laughs> uh, let's get some guests on! Later, we'll be meeting the writer of this season's surprise bestseller, Lady in Waiting. That's Lady Glen Connor. Yeah. And we'll have music from Mr. Niall Horan. Yeah. But first, he's not only the basket winning star of the IT crowd, Travel Man, and Crystal Maze, but also a critically acclaimed writer and director. It's Richard Ioadi! as the Black Panther in Marvel's billion-dollar hit. Now he brings us gritty cop thriller 21 Bridges. Please welcome Chadwick Boseman! And we the two new stars of The Crown. She's shone in Room with a View, Harry Potter, Ocean's 8 and The King's Speech. Now she steps into the glittering shoes of Princess Margaret. It's Helena Bonham Carter! <laughs> And how do you follow Broadchurch, Fleabag, and a Best Actress Oscar for the favourite? Well, you play Her Majesty the Queen, of course. Please welcome Olivia Coleman. Welcome, 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 welcome. You're right there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this is like being in sit form again. Yeah. <laughs> I asked not to be sat next to someone more handsome than me. Uh, uh, please. I, I think please. You did, did you get please. that? Please. <laughs> like every school bus I've ever been on. <laughs> <laughs> and talking to someone more charismatic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Dear Rich. Um, now, now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, since you were last here, Olivia Coleman, I feel like our own Olivia Coleman now has an Oscar. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's so exciting. <laughs> it's None of your best supporting. <laughs> no, actual full on best ever. Uh, yeah. I don't think it says best ever. I think it is. I think they're finishing it now. They've stopped. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won. Cool. Um, it, but it must have been a bonkers night. I actually can't remember it. And we were saying backstage we met. Can't remember it. She was in a daze after she won. Yeah. So yeah. It, she but, didn't but, even remember. But in fairness, Chadwick Boseman, a huge night for you as well. I mean, Black oh Panther God, was up yes. for how many? Or what, seven? Uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It was, it was a great... You know, I expected it to be just a normal night. It was like, there's a whole bunch of hype about being at the Oscars and being nominated, but there was some magic in the air. It was a real sparkle, you know? Just wish I could remember any of it. You yeah. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard, what was it like for you, sitting at home? Not at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. it, was, it was business as usual. And, uh, <laughs> and I look forward to a lifetime of not being there. <laughs> It must be nice cheering on Olivia, because you guys have known each other for a really long time. Oh, I bitterly resented it. <laughs> bitterly. Oh, yes, well, I, um, at uh, college, live next to Olivia's husband. Yeah. Um, it's not a great story, but it is true. <laughs> um, it doesn't really have an arc. <laughs> yeah. As but... a story, it kind of ends. Yeah, but, but it's yeah. true. It is true. It's true, but boring. <laughs> <laughs> like me. And, uh, now, 
Helen, you've been nominated a couple of times for the Oscars. Yeah, I didn't win him. No, but you got nominated. <laughs> no, but I still didn't win him. But no, <laughs> is that, is that why you him? don't enjoy events like no, that? No, it's not that. I'm not very good at sitting still, so you have to have your hair and oh, make sure really not. Yeah. I'm really not good. <laughs> and so it's, uh, it, and they're long events. Yes. They do, but the great thing about the Oscars is that the bar is just there, just behind there. And so almost all the time, Everybody's everyone's in the bar. No one's sitting bar. in it. That's true. There are They're hundreds there. of seat, seat fillers. fillers. Hundreds. Oh, really? So yeah, almost yeah. everybody is getting bladdered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then someone comes in and goes, we're up to the best documentary. And they go, for And people go, <laughs> running in. <laughs> Yeah, running in. The bar most of the time. Oh, yeah, I was. I was there yeah. 90% of the time. Uh, but, Helen, I think one of the reasons that uh, Helena might enjoy the Oscars yeah. is because you can't <laughs> control who you bump into on the red carpet. I think we've got a picture of you Ooh. the year you were nominated for the King's Speech on the red carpet. Really? Look, at, look at Helena's thrilled <gasps> face. <laughs> No, I don't know. You, You've just superimposed that. No, no. We've, no, no you there are multiple you pictures. Have and and what somebody is, there are multiple pictures, and we thought, oh, oh maybe we've picked an unfortunate picture. No, your face is like that in them all. <laughs> 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 I've got a good judgment. I'll just... <laughs> oh, well, that just... was way before he became Donald Trump, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, we know yeah. What you yeah, mean. yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, everybody's talking about uh, Olivia and Helena in yeah, The Crown. Good. Season 3 kicks off on the 17th of November on Netflix. And uh, Helena taking over Princess Margaret, Olivia is the Queen. <laughs> Before we talk about it, let's have a look at the two of you of action. This is Princess Margaret coming back from a triumphant tour of America. Oh, yeah. Ooh. You've had great, you've had nothing, you've no, had great you, reviews. Are you thinking now we're a Claire Foy and Vanessa Kirby? No, I'm so not. Are you sure? A positive. So, so not. You. So not. Well, he has to say that with Yeah, I know, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but, one, you're both great in it, but two, it's interesting that certainly the first couple of episodes, they do play on this sort of, it's sweet sort of a sibling rivalry, even though it's the Queen and Princess Margaret, they're properly kind of at each other. Well, sisters do, don't they? I mean, they're the most committed to each other, they're the only ones that know each other inside out. Because they were homeschooled and spent yeah, every day together. they had the war together. The war Take together. War. I don't think they spent the le most of their childhood yeah. alone together, so I think... So they knew each other before they were meant to ever be in this position? Yes. And you have said, you have said, Olivia, that you're not a great one for the research. <laughs> Understatement. But... Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love you. No, but you must, have done, you must have done some for this. No. You must have done some for this. <clears throat> um, I... Yep. <laughs> no. <laughs> you licked a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were all given lovely Polly, who's a movement coach, and I just, it turns out, I can't change what my body does. So I still walk like me, which is, I've been told, quite like Bomber. a farmer. And no, I have said, I saw, there's a scene in it, and it's you and Prince Philip walking up the garden. Is it filmed on the back of my head? No, it's oh. the two of you walking up towards you out in the garden. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, you Did you say farmer? <laughs> Okay, so Does I... the Queen do arms? Yeah. Well, every now and then, when I'm it. really concentrating, I can get a little bit right. So I might... Was I doing that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm not very good at. But no, but you go to extraordinary lengths to research. I go things. to ridiculous things. I don't think it necessarily is necessary. But I enjoy it. I do but enjoy it. But you love it. I love it. And I you... like the. Um... Did you? Were you brilliant at school at research and projects? Yeah, I was a swat. Shit at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then you've got a friend. Is it a, a friend of yours who's a psychic? Oh God! Ooh. Yeah, you this is my favourite bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how one story comes out and then it obliterates. So it's, it's well, the in, defining in, thing. In fairness, I, yeah, I, other I, actors going, okay. I want to hear more. I want to hear. Well, look. Yeah, I did um, meet a psychic who's a friend of mine, and I was seeing her. She's got lots and lots of different um, strings to her bow, and she does healing, and she does. Um, other things, and but she also has a, um, a talent for mediumship. And as I was do seeing her for something else, she said, "Oh, Margaret is here. Does that mean anything?" And I, and I said, "Yes, it does." And I suddenly thought, "Well, I've got." If this I'm is play before you get. Before I had been asked to play her. I hadn't actually said yes at that point. Oh. And uh, I said, "Well, yeah, no, actually, if you've got the horse, you know, the horse's mouth, it's in the room. You're not going to say yes. no, actually, you know." So. And so I said, um, yeah. And I asked, I said, would you mind if I played you? And uh, the, she said, I Despite prefer you. She what said, the answer was. No, she <laughs> said, well, no, she did say, I, I think you're a better idea than the other actor. 
Oh, the other idea. Well, the other, you know, the other. Who was the other? They never told me the other, the other possibility. But whether it was but or not, the sound of a lone gunshot right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But the, uh, it was a very typically a typical Margaret thing in the. Because you had met her. I have met her. She has a she had a way, oh, yeah, a couple of times. This? Yeah, yeah, you see the not. Oh. But um <laughs> but there's she had a little way of sometimes complimenting you and putting you down at the same time. She was um and the fact that she said, oh, yeah, I think you're better than the other. It was just like you never knew where you were with her. Then she came through with another note, which was useful, whether it came, whether it was true because the psychic was fantastically intuitive or there really was the ghost of Margaret telling me I don't I don't know, but the note was good and it says I get the smoking right. OK. And I smoked in a particular way and always remember that the wow. cigarette holder is as much a weapon for expression as anything else. And that was a good note. And she was somebody who was innately dramatic. If you're royal, you can't necessarily talk much. You're a walking icon. You're a walking... So she was very... She was very, I think, <laughs> conscious about the silhouette and whatever she did with her body and particularly with her hands. And so, you know, anyway. Am I waxing? No, I no. love you. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I, you don't uh, believe in talking well, to dead people? No. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. The Queen's still alive. The Queen's still alive. There's many things I don't I know. believe other people do believe, and, I know. and vice versa. And we respect so, our And We do. I respect it. And I whatever you've done, you. it's beautiful in the end anyway. And is this ringing bells with you, Chadwick? Because before yeah, Black Panther, you played quite a few real people. Yeah, I had a similar experience, actually, with not with the medium. Okay. But 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 with James Brown, because uh, I had a lot of questions about about playing him. In fact, said no to the role a lot of times. But after I accepted it, it was like, well, how are you going to do any of this? The the movement, the dance, the, his walk, yeah. his his it's voice, all of it. And I, I went to sleep uh, one night and woke up just kind of doing the voice. Ooh. And the first thing I said was, and so it was like his voice came out of me, and it was like he said, you're going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> but you ain't going to be better than me. Oh. <laughs> That's really great. Uh, you had a kind of weird experience where, in the IT crowd, sure. you thought you were playing a character. Well... <laughs> I, I, I did a lot of research um, for um, that part, um, uh, where I play a geek. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I, I went online, <laughs> and that was that was it. <laughs> um, also, Graham, who wrote it, he said, "I'm, you, you know, I've written a part. It's for the nerdiest person in the world." Um, I thought of you, <laughs> um, and so that was that. Really, yeah. There, there were no voices. Um, I think... Well, it would have been your own voice. Yeah, I, I said, do you want me to do a voice um, to be the nerdiest person? And he went, no, 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 just yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, that was it. But... Yeah. But Moss... Moss is one of those characters that d does delight people, and uh, even this Halloween, uh, so people were dressing up as Moss from the IT crowd. Oh, right. And uh, the, you, might have, you must have seen this picture. There was a little girl. Do you know this? Well, look, it's a cheap costume. It's a check shirt. Oh, no, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't dash her dreams. I will not. <laughs> this is a little girl in America, and she's a big fan. And for Halloween, she went as Moss. Oh. Look at that! What? She's got the computer and the, the calculator watch and everything. That's yes. good. That's good, right? Oh, it, the emotional good. range is too large, though. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to kind of dial it back a bit. <laughs> I also spoke to her. <laughs> 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 I said, you've got to get there. <laughs> Uh, now, Chadwick Boseman, Chadwick Boseman, he brings a great... No, no, stay on them. Stay no, on them. no, stop it! <laughs> uh, 21 Bridges, it's out on the 22nd of November, which is easy to remember. And this is, I have to say, I went into it knowing nothing about it. I knew it was That's called, the best way to watch it. Yeah, I knew it was called 21 Bridges and I knew you were in it, and I, that's all I knew. Everybody, that's all you need to know. <laughs> I, I was hoping you'd tell us something else. Uh, <laughs> 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 is, that, is that my cue? Yeah, that's your cue. Okay, Go. okay. <laughs> uh, basically, this is it's a cop thriller. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those movies that... But it's a really good one, I have yeah, to say. Thank yeah, thank you, thank you. That you would have seen in the 70s, 80s, 90s, they don't make anymore. 
uh, you know, eight cops are killed and I am the detective that's brought in because I am the person who finds and kills cop killers. And so we shut down the city of Manhattan, all of the ways in and out of the city, the bridges, 21 bridges, uh, uh, in order to do this manhunt. And that's all I can tell you because I don't want to give anything else away. But here's an odd thing. It wasn't always called 21 bridges. It was called 17 bridges first. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they did not build four. No, they didn't. Like, we were in the middle of shooting. <laughs> oh, sorry. I, I, no, no, no. You think, yeah. I can't do that. And, and, yeah. I, and, I, and, you know, they came and I said, I think we got the number of bridges wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. And I literally had my whole speech about how we are supposed to shut down the bridges. And I was like, well, how many do I say? Do I say 18, 19, 20, 20? So they had to do this whole thing where they were, like, counting... How could the, they have got they that wrong? They did not do that before. I, that's what I said. Yeah. It does seem yeah, like... I, well, it, I, I, it's I all pretty so, basic. You know, I've just gone on Google Maps. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought that, too. Yeah. But yeah. it's way more complicated than what? that, because there's, like, <laughs> actually... You've got his interest now. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there's, Google Maps had there's, it covered. There's, there's <laughs> over 100 bridges, actually, in the city, but we're talking about the bridges that go in and out of the city. So like, in, off the, the island? Yeah. It, it, off the in and off the island, yeah. it's it's more complicated than you think it is. So it was really hard to count it, and I, we didn't want to get it wrong. No, it was so, really hard to sure. count it. Yeah, it was, was it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. No, it's not that easy. It's not as easy as you think it is. Okay. Uh, we've got a clip. This, I think, this is probably the speech you're talking about. Uh, it is. This, this is the speech. Yeah, this is you as Detective Davis laying out your cunning plan. Yes. Here we go. Ooh. It's a really, you know, it is a classic kind of New York cop thriller. Yeah, but one of the things is, is the dialogue is great. It's got proper kind of, yeah, it feels, like, sparky dialogue. Yeah, it feels like, you know, I, I haven't had the opportunity to do theater in quite some years, so it felt like I could use my Meisner technique and, you know, felt like uh, some of the scenes with, with J.K. and whatnot, I felt like David Mamet a little bit. So it, it, it was fun to be able to do that in a film and... You know, I, I, I got a lot of my training when I was in New York, so to be able to play that actually in the city, in the street, was fun. Yeah. yeah. And, and as you say, you started out in theatre, and when you were a student, a theatre student, you had a mysterious benefactor, did you not? Oh. <laughs> Great expectations. <yes. laughs> uh, yeah, I, I went to... Uh, I did a summer exchange at the British American Dramatic Academy at Balliol College in Oxford. Mm. Um, I didn't have the money to pay for it, but one of my teachers at that time was, was she would come in for a, a weekly class, Felicia Rashad, oh. uh, people, a, lot, a lot of people know from the Cosby Show. She would come in and do a class at Howard. And so she wanted us to, you know, audition for this program. And, you know, it was nine of us. She got some of her friends to pay for it. And so my benefactor would, ended up being Denzel Washington. Wow. Oh, and so, uh, you know, I found that out. Proper goosebumps. Did, I, did, did you pay him back? You sound like him. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you sound exactly like him. So, you know, the funny thing is he, he showed up at the New York premiere of Black Panther, and I had never told anyone, you know, about that. Oh. And, uh, you know, I, he comes in the back, and he thinks he's sneaking in, and Ryan Coogler, the director, we're there, and, and I'm like, you know, it's great to meet you. Big fan of your work. I uh, just wanted to tell you thank you for paying for me to go to, to Oxford. And he was like, oh, you owe me money, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, That's... yeah. Well, also, oh, because, and after Black Panther, you can pay him. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. Well, he, I just did a movie that he produced, and so he got me cheap, you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, talking of Black Panther, uh, Black Panther, the next one, when is the next one? When are we going to see... Uh, 2022, Panther? that's when it will come out. And, uh, you know, so we have some time to... To prepare it. Wow. And get ready for You've that. already filmed it? No, we haven't. No, oh, we I see, haven't I see. filmed it. Yeah. That's when it that's when yes. it's <laughs> 2022. Yes. All right. It's all right. Don't right. know how it all works. <laughs> And Black Panther, it must be amazing to be part of a billion-dollar movie anyway. But that movie, it, I mean, it was such a kind of 
it seemed like a kind of cultural game changer that it kind of opened up worlds. Yeah, I mean, it's it's for me, it's sort of hard to grasp uh, because I. You know, Halloween, you, seeing people dress up, like we just had that, seeing people dress up as all of the characters and dress up as you, it's kind of overwhelming. Like, I can forget, about, I try to forget about it in my day-to-day -day life, um, but, in, you know, you're doing, doing your regular routine, but I can't really go anywhere now and not see it, you know, and not see, have people sort of remind you of it. So it's fun, and it's also, like, sometimes a little too much. <laughs> well, yeah, but... the Wakanda Forever thing, that must... I mean, I'm sure it was very exciting when it started. Right. Um, <laughs> but you mean, like, the whole... Yeah, so we've got, we've got pictures of you. I think this is kind of your journey of Wakanda Forever. <laughs> so here you are, loving it. Oh, so fun. <laughs> Let's all do Wakanda Forever. <laughs> then we've got one where you're... you're yeah, OK, let's do it. Let's just do it. Yes, OK, yes, I'm, I'm doing it for you. And this is the other end of Wakanda Forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Over it. Right. <laughs> and, right, uh, moving on, because Richard Ayoade has written a book. Uh, yes. Uh, wow. Thank you. Loving the book. Wow. And if uh, you all it... look under your seat... <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's called I Am Addy on Top. And yes. before we talk about it, I'm going to say, because it's true, it is a really funny book. I say that because it may not be <laughs> initially apparent when you start talking about what it's about. Yes. <laughs> Thank you um, for preempting my poor salesmanship. <laughs> um, because I tend to put people off <laughs> anything that's to do with me. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah. well, you're very kind to say that. It is very funny, but uh, now you need to tell people what it's about. OK. And let me do some damage now. So, <laughs> to, to say, it is about a Gwyneth Paltrow film called View from the Top, mm. um, in which she plays a stewardess. This is the poster. This you, is the poster. Have you all seen that film? Have you seen this no. film? Is it true? I, I, saw it. I saw it. No, it's a real film. I saw it. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, it's a real film. Oh, I haven't seen it. Well, buckle up. Do I need to see it? <laughs> Literally, you to read it? literally, do I... you do not need to. If you've seen any film, you have seen this film. Oh, okay. <laughs> it is very similar to all films. <laughs> Willis Paltrow plays a blue collar worker. <laughs> um, I don't know what research she did. Maybe she went <laughs> into Whole Foods once. <laughs> um, and she dreams of becoming an air stewardess. She becomes one. <laughs> That's the film. <laughs> But here's the dilemma. Can she be an air stewardess and maintain a loving relationship with Mark Ruffalo? Oh, yeah. Everyone... No. Oh. no. The, the demands of being an air stewardess are too onerous. Mark she's Ruffalo? Got, she's got to hand out salty nuts. <laughs> there are um, little blowy things she's got to demonstrate. It's a nightmare. So <laughs> they break up for a while. <gasps> what should she do? You're, you're literally the opposite of on the edge oh, of your seat. You're so tired. <laughs> you're like this. You're like, you're... Stop telling me the story. <laughs> Stop it. She manages to reconcile with Mark Ruffalo. Oh. Happy ending? Despite yeah. the salty notes. The... the <laughs> no. <laughs> the salty notes are an attraction. Um, and then, at the end, it is a huge gun battle. What? No, it's not. She bends down and kisses him. But this is essentially oh. a sort of academic reading of it, as if it's a, a classic. I, yes, I saw this film with um, my wife. That's not a joke. I... chose <laughs> <laughs> to marry me. That is not... That is possible, that someone would choose that. <laughs> I saw this film with my wife and... I was so haunted by this film <laughs> that it's taken me three years to exercise that <laughs> in my system. And I've gone through the book in forensic detail, explaining why it's so important, and I've interwoven it with um, things from my life. It really is so important um, to give this film the respect it deserves. <laughs> um, because people haven't seen it, people aren't discussing it. Can you believe this is the first book about this film? <laughs> <laughs>
the first one. That's an atrocity. People aren't taking it seriously, Graham. <laughs> it's a whole book. And we need to have a conversation about this film. But, yeah, but also, I mean, as you say, you do, you do weave in other things. There's a beautiful evocation of your childhood Christmases in Ipswich. Yes. And they celebrate Christmas in Ipswich to this day. <laughs> and they still do. Um, my mother liked the house very clean for Christmas. Um, we, we would have to clean everything before presents were given out, which was on Christmas Eve. My mother was Norwegian. But it really was a ruse just to really amp up the housework. <laughs> and um, <laughs> she baked a lot of biscuits, Christmas biscuits, which I found out aren't a thing. <laughs> no, she just when you brought... say biscuits, do you mean biscuits or, I needed or do you energy... mean cookies? Cookies. Oh, co no, cookies. I need... oh, cookies. Oh, cookies. Okay, there, okay. You're on my turf now, Chadwick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to understand what you mean. Because we put out we yeah. put out biscuits for Santa Claus. Too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Well we cookies. call them cookies though. I needed the biscuits yeah. to have the energy to clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just ask, does Gwyneth know about it? Does Gwyneth know about this? Um, yeah. She's not emailed me as yet. <laughs> but I don't know. She may be, you know, in the middle of a cleanse. <laughs> We don't know. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> Very good. Uh, right, it is time to meet my next guest. Uh, this lady has had an extraordinary life of privilege but also drama, including 30 years as friend, confidant, and lady waiting to Princess Margaret. Her life story has now become a best selling memoir. I'm delighted to welcome Lady Glenn Connor. Oh! <laughs> Chadwick and Richard. Have a seat, do. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Uh, so nice to see you. Well, Thank you for being Lovely. I'm so excited. I can't tell. All my life I wanted to be on the red sofa. Well, here you are. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> no, because we met on, on the radio and we did a lovely chat. And yeah. then because Olivia and Helena were going to be here, um, I just thought, what a great opportunity to well, have you yes, on. Yes, because we're Norfolk girls. Yes! I mean, we've got something tremendous in common. Yes. And, and did you live in North Norfolk? Yes. You did? So you know Holcomb? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 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 I, I, I always want to ask, how, is that how you say it? Holcomb? Yes. Yes, how do you say it? Holcomb. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> you know when people say uh, Holcomb and miss out the L? No, no, well, that's wrong. But wrong! You know, one can't... Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we should, we should explain, we should explain that, um, that uh, Lady and Connor in, is mm. going to be, not you, you sort of are a character in The Crown. Yes, yes. I have somebody playing me. Yeah, Nancy, Nancy. Carroll. Yeah. Yes, uh, she's my best friend. Uh, good. I mean, not in real life. Uh, well, but... <laughs> 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 no, I mean, in the... Well, I, mean, I, I thought friends. I might have to curtsy to you when I came on. And then I, I thought that should. was a bit cheesy. No, I don't think it's cheesy. <laughs> Should we try it? But, well, well, <laughs> I, <laughs> but, but, the, but talking to Helena about the yeah. crown kind of sparked the idea for your book. Well, it did, absolutely. Because, Helena, I haven't seen you as Fitz as Margaret, no, don't but worry. I have a feeling you're absolutely marvellous. She's Why? an amazing no, woman. No, I mean, my book also was partly written because I was so fed up with people writing about horrible things about her, mm -hmm. and they never met her. And I wanted to sort of show what a... Actually, she was a huge and wonderful friend to me. But now, the book is called Leading in Waiting, My Extraordinary Life in the Shadow of the Crown, and it's, it's out now. And it's, it's interesting because, in fact, I think people might be drawn to it because of the royal connections and because of Princess Margaret. But, as I was saying, you know, it's your life that well, is well, amazing. I'm so glad you said that, Graham, because everybody always asks me questions about the royal family, and it's actually my book. Yeah. So I'm struggling back there. No, and, but also, but your life is beyond... I mean, it's, well, it is a, a, it's a quite a mad life you've lived. Yes, I think it probably was. I thought it was quite normal, actually, until it's I... It's not. The book. It's really not. <laughs> uh... No, I think it was, and I'm so surprised when people are so amazed by it, you know. And uh, part of the central, I suppose, story of, of the book is your marriage to uh, Lord... Colin. Colin. Yeah, yeah, to Colin. And, I mean... Quite early on. <laughs> I, mean, well, he, well, he... I know what you're going to ask me. What my mother told me about sex. Oh, I wasn't, <laughs> but... Um... <laughs> but I mean, 
feel free. Yeah, uh, you know, I, well, I thought that's what you were sort no, of... No, no, fear, no, I... No. Come on, tell us. There yeah, were just absolutely... Uh, well, I was 11 and I was being... Um, my mother was taking me to boarding school for the first time and I suppose she felt she had to tell me something, you know. And she said... <laughs> boarding uh, school? Uh, um, Eleven? Well, Is what that what happened? happened? She said, you, you know when Biscuit was her dog? Biscuit. Uh, when blood... <laughs> when... It's also a dog. <laughs> well, well, when blood comes out of Biscuit's bottom, yes. that's what's going to happen to you shortly. And what? also, <laughs> when Daddy's Labrador gets on top of Biscuit, uh, that's going to happen when you get married, but you'll probably be lying in a bed. And that's all <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> I must have some water. Is this my... Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. yours. I may have to have a huge thing of vodka. Now. No, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that, in a way, it prepares you for life. Well, it sort of did. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, look, 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 if, do you want me to go into my honeymoon now? Yeah. Uh, please do. <laughs> please do. We're, we're on a roll, Lady and Connor. Yeah, yeah, well, Chadwick I, looks I, shocked. I, 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 I did, because the thing was that when, people, when I wrote this book, people thought it was going to be a little lavender sort of scented memoir. And I said, <laughs> well, actually, I'm afraid it's not going to be. And then everybody said, oh, I'm going to buy it for my mother. And I said, well, I'm not sure. I do hope your mother's broad-minded. <laughs> <laughs> I've sent it to mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think mothers are rather broad-minded. Yes. Anyway, um, Colin and I, I had the most fantastic wedding at Hoko. I was treated as a, uh, as a son. There were three tents, three... I had three wedding cakes. And Tony Snowden took my um, wedding photographs and my father rather rudely called him Tony Snapshot, which I think he actually <laughs> <laughs> never forget. Um, and anyway, there I was, having had this amazing wedding, wonderful wedding dress and everything like that, and we, we were going to Paris for my honeymoon and we arrived very late at night at the Lottie Hotel and um, went up to the, I imagine, the sort of bridal suite. Well, he lay down and went to sleep. And that, <laughs> that was my honeymoon. I mean, well, I'm longing for a night of passion, you know. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, and then the next day we spent looking, we went to the Louvre or something. And then Colin <laughs> said, uh, I'm slightly bored by that. And then Colin <laughs> said, well, um, I've got a great treat for you. And so I was absolutely thrilled. I thought, dinner at the Ritz, you know. And I put on my best dress, all that sort of thing. We got into the car. And I did rather see, I saw the Ritz miles away, but off we went to the outskirts. And we stopped at this really seedy hotel. <laughs> and my heart sank. I thought, up we went to this room, and there were two seats. Um, they, were, they were wing back. Um, velvet seats. And so I sat, and on the bed were two really disgusting people making love. Uh, I was sort of squelching about it, and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I, I sat, sat back in my chair, closed my eyes, and I read, simply didn't want to look at Collie. I didn't know what he was doing. You know. <laughs> I sat there, <laughs> and then they kept on saying, would you like to join in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I said, well, look, it's very kind of you. Very kind of you. Terrible kind of you. Kind. But, but, but I really don't know. Uh, no, thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and eventually, thank God, they finished what they were doing. <laughs> And left the room. And I did say to Colin, I can't think, Colin, why you took me. <laughs> why you thought... And we said, I thought it might have... You know, I, I was a virgin, you see, because... Oh, all uh, yeah. uh, And I don't really? think Colin ever made love to a virgin, because he used to go off to... Um, it was a brothel. Yeah, it was yeah, probably, probably, probably You'll, you'll know it, Helena. You know it. Market uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Well, it, I think it was safe yeah. to say Colin, Colin <laughs> was a colourful character. Oh, well, he's so... <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. Uh, I mean, he was wonderful in lots of ways, but he did have this terrible temper. Yes, but but also very impulsive. Mm. I mean, he bought yes. he bought the island of Mustique. Yeah, well, he certainly did. Uh, um, he he didn't land there. He just, just sailed round. And then I went there the next year. I thought he was completely mad. But he did transform, sort of with the help of Princess Margaret, it into no, this no, billionaire's well, well, playground. Princess Margaret, I mean, you I you you up. came. Yeah. Uh, uh, your parent, uh, you came on your honeymoon. Uh, yeah. Wasn't it my seat. present? Uh, yes, and we hadn't given you a present. And Colin said, would you like something in a little box or would you like a piece of lamb? 
and say, oh, she said, piece of land. And then we didn't hear anything until her marriage started to go wrong. Uh -huh. And uh, she rang up and she said, you know, did you mean uh, what you said? Have I got a bit of land? And uh, we said, yes, and a house, she said. So Colin, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Colin took a deep breath and said, yes, ma'am, OK, a house. And, uh, <laughs> and in the book, I think yeah. we see a side of Princess Margaret that we, we don't know. You talk, you talk very movingly about her reaction uh, when your second son was diagnosed with AIDS. Well, yes, I mean, this is one of the things that, you know, people don't know about. My second son, Henry, got AIDS, and in those days, it was in the late 80s, People didn't know how you caught it. People were terrified. Um, it just it made an excuse and didn't come and yeah. stay. But Princess Margaret always came. She brought um, Sarah and David with her. She always hugged Henry. And when he was really ill, she used to come with me to a place called the Lighthouse. Yes, Which was um, created for um, young men dying of AIDS. And quite often their partners had died. Their parents wouldn't have anything to do with them. And Princess Margaret wasn't a sort of touchy-feely person, you know, she didn't sort of like Princess of Wales, but she was funny, she talked to them, she made them laugh, she made them yeah. forget, you know. And when... Uh, I was so grateful to her, you know, uh, the way she treated Henry. She had um, huge compassion, but she also didn't do it for publicity. No, she didn't, um, yeah. But your book... It sort of flips, because you've got what you expect, the privilege, the parties, the funny stories, all of that. And then you talk about your son, Henry, but in a very short space of time, you had your son, Henry, with AIDS, uh, yeah, Charlie just, with the heroin... Yeah. And, and then, we, and mm. he's here tonight, is Christopher, who had uh, the most appalling accident in Belize on a motorbike during his gap year. He was in a coma for six months and he couldn't talk for a year. Uh, and I knew the other two boys were going to die and I was absolutely determined that I wasn't going to lose Christopher. Yeah. And um, my nanny, Barbara Barnes, who went off to look after Prince William and Prince Harry, uh, um, had left her job and said, Lady Anne, I'll give you um, six months. And she, uh, Christopher was her first baby. And so she came and we did all sorts of things. We wrote a... In fact, we wrote an article for The Lancet about how, as lay people, we felt that... Um, how you should treat, you know, people in comas. And I don't know where Christopher is, but he's sitting here somewhere. Where is Christopher? But, oh, there he is. Uh, uh, with, with his daughter. <laughs> oh, fantastic. That's an amazing... <laughs> My twin daughters are here, and it's her birthday today. Oh! <laughs> happy birthday, twins! <laughs> there they are. Well, Amy and May. Amy and May. Happy birthday. Well, that's from Morris, so it fits in rather well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But here's, here's the thing. So you, you've had this extraordinary yeah. life. You've yeah. now relived it all and gone through it well, in this it's book. It's all like going to psychiatry. Yes. Actually. But yeah. are you yeah. enjoying... This bit. Are well, you enjoying stepping yes. out into the spotlight? Well, I'm 87, and I've never oh. had such a good time in my life. <laughs> oh. Well, it's been a delight. A delight. Good luck with the book. Oh. Lady Gantana, everybody. <laughs> it's been so lovely to have you on. It's been <laughs> Uh, right, time for music. This man's debut solo album, uh, Flickr, went straight in at number one and has since racked up a whopping 3.5 billion streams. Now he's back with a brand new song performing Nice to Meet Ya, it's Niall Horan! <laughs> Come in, have a seat there. Uh, Richard Iwabi, Jackie Bozen, Helen Carter, Rick Coleman, Lady Dan Connor. Hello, Hello ladies. Hello. How are you? Hello. Sorry to get you up. No, so there we go. And Lady Dan Connor. Oh, there we go. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Thanks very much. Uh, so that single is out now, right? Yes, it is indeed. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And now we thought we knew what you were doing. We thought, oh, Niall's the acoustic one. <laughs> uh, that's him. He's got his guitar. But you've gone all electric and strummy and stuff. Yeah, I suppose like I got a little bit confident off the success of Slow Hands and just went for it a bit more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just been good to kind of rock things up. Yeah. And now with the with this second album that I'm bringing out. 
It'll be like it'll be nice to have a the mix of the slow acoustic stuff and this crazier stuff when I yeah. go on tour. Well, it sounds yeah. great. It sounds really Thank good. Very much. Appreciate it. Uh, but now you did take some time off, didn't you? Yeah, I took about three or four months off, chilled out for a little bit, and then started writing the songs again. And but is this when you started your uh, your business? Uh, yeah, I started a, a golf management business. Woohoo! Yeah. That's sensible. <laughs> I know, very, Rock and very roll. sexy. Rock uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and roll. Uh, but, but you are a big fan of golf. You love yeah, golf. Yeah, I love golf and, and I wanted to kind of help young up and coming golfers in whatever way I could. So, started a company about, about two years ago, basically, but it's kind of kicked on this year. Yeah, yeah. And we've got some up and coming. Uh, young men, young ladies, and they're all doing really well. And we've had a few European tour wins this year, and it's been, yeah, quite a success. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well done. Yeah. It's such an odd, it's such an unusual thing to do. Yeah. Uh, my horn, you're going on, uh, you're going on tour of America. You're touring America. Yes. You, but is that prior to a tour here, or? Yeah, it'll be the agents and all the people to do that stuff are sticking okay. all the dates together, but. This and is you the and, tour and Lewis them. Capaldi. I mean, it's really posh. It's a very posh tour. <laughs> Not the most well-spoken tour of all time, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I felt coming out here tonight. I just I felt like I should have got elocution lessons or something just to be a part of this conversation. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. You're fine. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Please. Uh, listen, uh, re good luck with the tour, and uh, thanks for that brilliant performance. Niall Horan, everybody! <laughs> that is nearly it, but before we go... Uh, just time for a visit to the big red chair. Oh. Now, I have to say, I was nervous about this section, but having yeah. heard your honeymoon story, yeah. not yeah. so much. <laughs> 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 uh, I long to do it myself. <laughs> well, feel free. No, 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 no. I might just put my hand on it. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I can say that I have my hand yes, on yeah. it. Feel free to flip them. Oh, yeah. seriously. Uh, <laughs> you've written a book. What have you've they done? Them. Nothing. <laughs> uh, okay, so, hello, who have you got? Who have you got? Hello? Okay, Hello, hello. Hello, okay, now, now focus everyone, focus. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to focus the couch. You're in, yeah. Uh, what's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Sam from New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand, we like that. New Zealand, we like New Zealand. Yeah, sorry, yeah. He just clapped himself. <laughs> well, you know, he's from New Zealand, he's excited. I'll just no, sit no, there. Sorry, what'd you get for it for? Oh, what? really? Been yeah, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, okay. Zealand. wait, wait, wait. Sam, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Okay, focus, everyone. Focus. Focus. Okay, Sam. So, I know, really, uh, yeah, I would so, really gather yourself. All right, all right. Okay, uh, just go with your story. Go with your story. Okay, um, so my story actually involves one of your guests, Graham. Um, uh, Helena. Helena! Yeah. Helena. <laughs> so, yeah, my mum's a nurse, and um, she used to live in London. She told me not to tell the story, and she's probably going to kill me now. Oh, she will be like, oh, my God. You, you decide. Can we no, bring I'd him like back? to bring him back. He want, yes, we want to hear. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, you're good, Sam. You're golden. <laughs> you're golden. Oh, you've okay. Twice. Okay, here you go. Here you go, Sam. So your anyway, mother told you not to tell the story. Long story short. Helen is in it. Go. Yeah, okay. She's in it. Um, Mum was a nurse, and she actually used to look after her father for a while oh. when they lived above the flat. Oh. And anyway. Um, yeah, so. Mum would have a key and okay. she'd go up every now and again. I think one time she was actually in the bathroom. <clears throat> And she heard someone oh. singing around, singing around, and so she opened the door, and um, Helena's dancing around naked, dancing with some sort of song, and, and yeah, okay. that's where my mum first kind of they kind of met, and you know, that's it. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> It's easier now. Yeah. Uh, that really is all we've got time for tonight. If you'd like to have a go in that red chair yourself and tell your story, you can just contact us via our website. This is very address. Please say a huge thank you to all of my guests tonight. Niall Horn! <laughs> Richard Ayoade! <laughs> Chadwick Boseman! <laughs> Lady Glenn Connor! <laughs> Helena Bonham Carter! <laughs> and Olivia Coleman! <laughs> Next week, as I said, is Children in Need, but we will see you the Friday. After that, well, my guests will include Hollywood star Elizabeth Banks, comedy great Ricky Gervais, and Queen of Pop Kylie Minogue. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye. <laughs>